What if I told you there was a way to make your boat safer and reduce the amount of annual maintenance you had to do? Hi, I'm Joe, and this is Motor City Boat Works. This episode, we're going to talk about installing the stainless steel handrails on the Albin 27 Family Cruiser. The Albin 27 came from the factory with just four handholds. There were two on the forward cabin top and two on the pilot house. This boat, I decided what I wanted was something low maintenance, something very utilitarian, something that looked great and would hold up to the elements no matter what. Having all sorts of exotic wood on the boat looks great, but after a while, the maintenance becomes unbearable. It's just too difficult to keep it looking nice. I decided to swap out all the teak handrails on the boat to stainless steel. I figured it would totally modernize the boat. I ended up going from four teak handrails to 12 stainless steel handrails made from a local shop here in the Detroit area. By mounting handrails along the hard top of the boat, I got 360 degree coverage, ensuring that no matter where I walked around the boat, I would always have something to grab onto. Now my Albin 27 will still have teak frames for the pilot house windows, so there'll be a little wood on the boat, but everything else is now stainless steel. Today we're putting in some stainless steel handrails on the forward cabin of the boat. I pre-drilled the holes and now we're going to get ready to bolt them on. We got to put a little marine sealant that'll make everything nice and watertight. This type of project is all about working slowly and methodically. Marine sealant has a tendency to get everywhere. It'll get on your hands, on your clothes, in your hair. Ask me how I know. So you want to make sure you're wearing junky clothing and you have lots of cleanup materials handy. This is not the time to skimp on paper towels or acetone. So to seal these, when we put them on, I like to use uh, Loctite PL Marine adhesive sealant and it's a great substitute for 3m 4200 above the waterline things that you might take off someday or you don't want to destroy your boat removing I, I like to use 3m 4200 it's expensive and can be hard to find sometimes so I've recently switched to Loctite PL Marine and I really like it it's uh, working very very well almost very similar in the actual application process uh although they're chemically they're a little bit different and you can find it at big box stores and amazon which makes it amazing just to get things sent to your doorstep so the first thing we do is climb up on the boat dry fit everything make sure the holes and everything are all properly lined up in this case i've slightly over drilled the holes just to give me a little bit of room to ensure that the bolts thread properly into the handrails. So we're only like one sized up from the quarter inch bolts and uh, everything's stainless steel. We'll put some sealant on there and we'll begin to tighten everything down. Today, we just do it finger tight. Once it sets up in 24, 48 hours, we'll come back, we'll do it a little bit tighter. These handrails are just sexy. They're, uh, they're really beautiful handrails. I purchased these from a local shop here near Detroit and had them done. They're, uh, 
They did an amazing job. The welds are so tight and they're really pieces of art. Not cheap, but definitely worth it. Uh, there'll be no wood on the exterior of the boat. Should be super low maintenance and they will always look good. This is one of my favorite projects that I've done on the boat. I feel like it really transformed it and it makes a lot of practical sense. Now I don't get compensated for recommending anyone, but on occasion, I like to tell you who provided me a piece of equipment that really turned out nice. The handrails were fabricated by Whitewater Marine Metal Fabricators in Port Huron, Michigan. This week, we have a question from Mr. Calvin Brodus from Los Angeles, California. And Mr. Brodus would like to know, I noticed that sometimes you have short videos that are very similar to your episodes. What's up with that? Well, this brings up a really good point. You will notice on the YouTube channel that I generally do two types of videos. One is what's called a YouTube short. It's a new thing on YouTube. And the other is a regular long format episode of Motor City Boatworks. They're designed for two different purposes. Long form episodes are designed to cover a project in depth and explain how I did something. My short form YouTube videos are designed to get subscribers. So you will see content from the larger episodes brought down into the short form. It's to introduce new viewers to my YouTube channel. Subscribers are part of the economy of YouTube. We always need subscribers. We need to spread the word and build the community. Only by building the community at Motor City Boat Wars can we really have a great conversation about boat restoration and in particular, this boat restoration. If you like these videos, please hit the subscribe button. These videos would not be possible without your support.